Well, hey guys, Justin from Daddy Got Coffee here, and today I'm reviewing the Espresso Forge, one of the craziest and weirdest looking espresso makers out there. And before we get into the review, I would love for you to subscribe because I'm always reviewing weird stuff like this. And if you love coffee, you're gonna love my channel. So just subscribe, like the video, and leave a request for me for another video in the comments because I love answering your questions. Okay, let's check this out. The Espresso Forge is really more designed for portable espresso. So you can put this in your luggage, in your, shoe, in your suitcase, you can toss it on your backpack and take it out on a bike ride. Um, you can take it with you wherever you go, or you can, if you are using it at home, you can stash it away. So it's really designed to be used in a variety of situations, and this base really kind of reinforces that. It's a tripod base, which means no matter what kind of surface you put it on, whether it's even or uneven, at least the base is gonna be stable. Also, this silicone sleeve feels kind of weird, like it's kind of rubbery. It's very good at insulating the espresso maker, which is really good for temperature stability. Um, also, because this is so narrow, when you're pushing down on here, the surface area of actually what you are pushing down on is really tiny, which allows you to put a lot of pressure on a really small amount of area. And that's one reason why um, this espresso machine can be a 58 millimeter machine. Very easy to push down compared to some other levers. It has what is essentially a porta filter on the bottom and you can see the basket uh, comes with a 14 gram basket. You can put any 58 millimeter basket in here um, and this ring with rubber around the edge just kind of holds it in. Then we got the shower screen, pressure gauge, the pressure gauge is not in bar, it's in kilopascals or PSI. So you just need to do some conversion there. 200 kilopascals is basically two bar, 400 kilopascals is four bar and so on. So if you want two bar, you wanna be right about here and then nine bar is all the way kind of over here. Um, another neat thing about this, with manual espresso makers, you usually wanna preheat them just like an electric machine. Um, However, if you have one of these, you can preheat it just as you're warming up your kettle by leaving it on there while you're heating it up. Very cool. So yeah, that's how it works. Why don't we pull a shot with it? So basically, all you do is you unscrew this, you prep your puck just as you normally would, and then you're off to the races. So let's do it. I am pulling a 15 gram shot here. Now, just while I'm doing this, the cool thing about um, manual espresso makers is you can actually modulate the pressure to maintain a consistent flow rate, which can make for a lot better balanced of a flavor because if you have channeling, you can either start to see it in the flow rate or you can start to feel it under your hand. And then you can actually adjust the pressure to heal up some of that channeling, very cool. Okay, now we're about ready to pull here. And one thing you'll notice is that I am pulling on my kitchen table instead of on my counter. And that is because this thing is really tall when it's all the way extended and you do need to put a fair amount of pressure on it. So, you know, my arm is all the way up here, even on my kitchen table. If I was on my counter, it would be even further up. The most natural way is actually, you might actually wanna have it on the ground. Like if you're outside, that would feel great. And then you're actually pushing straight down on it. You could put a lot more force, a lot more easily on it, which is fantastic. But I usually just put my manual espresso makers on my kitchen table and make the espresso right there. One of the only things that I don't love about this design is when you take this plunger, you've got these O-rings, but then you need to put them down on whatever surface you have, which just kind of, I would rather have that like levitated up on something, but you know. Okay, so I'm gonna take my basket. I'm gonna put it on the bottom here. All right, then I'm gonna fill this up and then I'm gonna start plunging fairly quickly. So I'm doing a 15 gram shot, so I'm gonna aim for 30 grams of output. I'm gonna do a two bar pre-infusion until I start to get a drip. And then I'm gonna take it up to nine bar.
That was 30 grams of output in just about 30 seconds, so that's in the range of a good shot. I'm gonna do a little swirly McGee here. Mm, very smooth, very balanced shot. Man, I could just drink that whole thing. I think I'm just gonna down this. Oh, that's good. Mm. Yum. Okay, so you can see there's still some espresso coming out into this cup. This is one of the tricky things with manual espresso makers is when the water is in here, like it's all gotta come out through the bottom. So once you're done, you kinda just gotta keep pushing. Um, you, I call this the purge sometimes, like this is kind of what I would call a purging stage. And you know, you can take the thing out, which creates a bit of a vacuum in there. And then you gotta plunge it out and you keep doing that until, until it hisses and all the water is through. Or you can take it over to your sink and kind of dump it out, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So. The fact that I totally downed that espresso shot before I even got halfway through the video, I think should tell you one thing. The espresso out of this thing is really good. Um, the espresso out of manual espresso makers in general is really underrated, and this is a really good one. You know, the number of 58 millimeter machines is relatively few. There's the Flare 58, and there's the Cafe Lot Robot, which are both good ones. Um, and I think this is the only other one that I'm aware of that's actually 58 millimeter. Um, if there's another one, you can let me know in the comments. Um, but the espresso is really, really good. This espresso maker was sent to me by the Espresso Forge people. They're not paying me or nothing. It just, they said, hey, we'd love to see what you thought about it. They didn't ask me to make a video, none of that. They just sent it over because they were excited to share. And they have a Slayer that they're actually getting rid of to use these. Now, would I do that? I don't know, but I can tell you that the espresso is really, really good out of manual espresso makers. And I can see that once you get good at using one, you could pull as good as a Slayer um, or other very high-end machines for a lot less money. Now they are a little bit more cumbersome, of course. So you gotta take that for what it is. A couple things I like and I don't like, it's super portable, which is fantastic. You know, you could toss it in a backpack very easily. It's heavy, but it's not too heavy. So, you know, if you wanna go on a long camping trip or if you wanna go out in the wilderness and have some darn good espresso, bring a kettle and you can do that. Um, it's not the nicest looking, which if you're into a product like this, you're not in it for the looks, you're in it for the espresso. So that is what it is. A way to keep the plunger off the ground would be nice. Also, you absolutely have to have a gooseneck kettle to use this. Um, or else you're gonna make a huge mess. Um, so that's the Espresso Forge. Um, really cool, really fun. Let me know what you think of it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a request for a piece of equipment you would like to have reviewed, drop it in a comment below and we'll see you next week. Cheers.